Good afternoon. Welcome back to another edition of Mafia Roundtable with Dominic Sicali. Everybody, please hit the subscribe button if you like the video. Even if you don't like the like the video, hit subscribe. Um, it's nice to see the viewer content go up. The it's the subscribers. Thank you for all the love and support. We'll keep on pushing out quality work. Hopefully, we won't stumble with our words that were. Were-ble-ble-ble-ble. But um, also, I want to thank our sponsor, EG Vodka. Go to egvodka.com, buy your vodka. Uh, excellent, 100% organic, great taste in vodka. We have three flavors Earl Grey, which is great with a vodka martini, uh, vodka martini, uh, espresso martini, really good. And then we have the um, rosemary lavender, good with uh, lemon drop martinis, really good. So it was made for lemonade. And then we have the regular, the organic, the America's Vodka, which I like my dirty martinis. So with that, go to egvodka.com, order it today. Uh, this story, it's going to be a double-header story. We're talking about Nicholas Piscotti, who is my acting cap- captain in the Bonanno crime family. And then also we'll talk about the Penthouse Club which is a strip club in Manhattan, bigger than scores. I mean, the place was just phenomenal. So one night we were out having dinner. It's Nicholas Piscotti, known as PJ. I'll refer to him as PJ. Anthony Aiello, Ace. uh, And we had a bunch of other guys. There might have been about four or five other guys with us. So we're in the city having dinner, and then from there we had a few drinks. So one of the guys says, hey, there's a club in the city just open, nice place, let's go there. I know them there. So we go to the place, we don't pay anything to get in, but we took care of all the bounces. There was maybe about seven bounces, gave them all $100 each. We're in the VIP section there, like hovered around us. I got up to go to the bathroom. I mean, the guy followed me to the bathroom. Come back, we're sitting down having a good time. Uh, the kid who raps in the Bronx, I think his name is Michael Panini. He's there. And he's there with like three other guys. They're having a good time. He comes over, says hello. He sees PJ with me. He, him and PJ, they start talking. Uh, when PJ came back, I'm like, everything all right? I saw he was bothered. He said, nah, this fucking guy's just aggravated me. I said, all right, well, there's not going to be a problem, right? No, no, no. Okay. Lo and behold, we're drinking. All of a sudden, like, I'm watching PJ. So I know the way he is. He's a firecracker. He'll go in a heartbeat, fighting-wise. And I see his body language, and I look. And then I see Michael Panini like this, just staring at him. So I said, I grab PJ. No problems here, right? He says, no, but I'm going to fuck him up. I said, PJ, relax. Let me, I'll handle it. I walk over to Michael. Now, he's from the neighborhood. The father was around Vinny, Tommy. Um, wound up getting killed uh, over a parking spot. And some girl said something to him, and he just said, calm down. The boyfriend came out and shot him in the head. I mean, it was sad. It was actually when I first came around Vinny. And they were given, um, the Paninis were taking all the pot. They were, they were slinging pot. Um, and PJ was actually taking pot from Vinny and Bruno and giving it to Michael Panini. And he was selling it. So, or vice versa, oh, I'm sorry, it was the other way around. Tommy Panini and Michael gave the pot to PJ. And PJ was selling it. But the end, the end. And source was Vinny and Bruno. They were the ones giving it to them. So um, I walk over to Michael. I said, Michael, what the fuck's the problem? Well, Dom, you know, I said, Michael, I don't want to hear it. You either leave the club now or go somewhere else in the club. Don't let me kick you out. Come on. You're a good kid. You're from the neighborhood. Don't let me go like that, get like that with you. He's like, I know Dom, but but no, there's no buts. That's my brother over there, so forget about it. Whatever's going on. But he owes me money. This is not the time and place. 
come to my real estate office during the week. I'll be there. I gave him a day. Uh, we'll sit down and, you know, we'll get to the bottom of it. You know, if you owed money, you'll get the money. All right, all right, thank you, thank you. All right, just go. So I go walking back over. Come on, let's have a drink. PJ, forget about it. He's going to move. He's staying in the club, but he's going elsewhere. He's not going to mean mug you or do anything. So as they're pouring the drinks, the girl's pouring the drinks. First, we have the bottle. So PJ's facing over my shoulder. I'm talking to him. I said, see, I took care of it. And I'm telling him, like, I took care of it. He says, thank you. You really took care of it really good. What are you talking about? Look. And I look. There's Michael again. Me mugging. All of a sudden, with that, PJ gets up. Rushes over to him and starts swinging on him. Friends, somebody went to grab him. I'm right behind PJ. Ace is behind me. Like, our whole group went over there. And we're just going at it. I mean, we're leveling. Anybody that comes in our vicinity, we're leveling. Stomping on them. Crushing them. I mean, just... We're destroying the whole place. We're just going, really going to work nonstop. With that, you know, it felt like five minutes, but might have been maybe 45 seconds, if that, a minute tops. We're done. The bouncers are like, somebody called the cops are coming. Get out. So they let us out the side door. So we all go out the side door. We leave. We get in the car, Ace is driving, and we're all talking like, fuck, PJ, god damn. So he said, well, you, t- you know, I told you, I told you. And we're going back and forth. All right, where are we going? All right, let's go to the penthouse club. You know, I'll give them a call. We'll get right in. I have my table, and I'll go into later the story with that. But we're going. We're maybe about 10 blocks away. All of a sudden, we're down a side street. Cops on more cars, they come out, guns drawn, we all get out of the cars, hands up, they put us on the floor, get up, they're looking at us, searched us, they didn't find anything. All of a sudden, they're like, you were the guys at the club, what are you talking about, what club? No, it wasn't us. And I mean, just total assholes um, with the guns in our faces, like, wow, you know, you really scare us. You know, we're scared. You have a gun to our face. You see we have nothing on us. Makes you feel good. And then with that, they finally withdraw. They pull back their weapons. And we're just going back and forth with them. Well, you guys are waiting here. For what? We're going to see. We're going to see. They brought the bouncers first. Bouncers come, looked at us. They said, no, we don't know them. We've never seen them before. So they leave. All of a sudden, the ambulance come. Guys are coming out, wrapped, I mean, heads wrapped, nose wrapped. And they're like, are these the guys? And I'm like, oh, we're fucked. We're fucked. No, we've never seen them before. Every one of them, there was like four of them, Michael included. I knew Michael would never say anything. No, 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 we don't know them, we don't know them. With that, you're done, officers. You're done. You're done harassing us. We wind up leaving. We go to the strip club, had a good time. But um, then a few days later, Michael comes into the real estate office, all banged up. I'm like, Michael, no matter of fact, he didn't come into the real estate office. I sent for him. I sent for him. And then he came in, and um, I'm like, are you out of your fucking mind? I pull him outside, and I'm giving him the riot act. Who the fuck you think you are? I told you this, that, and the other thing. Now I'm telling you this. You were owed money? Because PJ told me the story. He took pot from you guys. He owed you, what, ten, fifteen thousand to your father? You're trying to collect it? You're not getting paid. Okay? You want to take it further? Try to take it further. You can't go anywhere. You're with me. Um, Dom, why are you doing that? Because I can, and I'm going to do it. Because I gave you strict orders. You made me look like an asshole. Now you're not getting paid. So he's like, all right, all right. And who was those other guys? Oh, they were friends of mine. They came from Italy. They knew, you know, they were just trying to break it up, which I'm sure they were because none of us, I mean, we didn't have, not one of us had a mark on ourselves. 
So that was probably true. But um, okay, tell them I said thank you for holding up, not getting anybody jammed up. No, they know, they know. All right, thank you. And I says, listen, even with your rap career, if you want, we'll help you out. But Mike, come on, you got to slow down with this shit. I mean, you started up a whole thing. like, And I told you, you made me look stupid. So I'm calming down now. He says, I know, I apologize, I apologize. Good kid. Just, uh, I guess, a little bit too much with the ecstasy and party and just didn't have his right head on that, that evening. So now we have the strip club, Penthouse Club. Vinny tells me, he's like, Joe Messino don't want us in strip clubs or nightclubs. I'm like, Vinny, are you fucking kidding me? So Vinny started telling me this after the fight. So he's like, look. If that got back to Joe, how does it look? Captain, acting captain, you're getting into a fight. I'm like, Vinny, let me ask you something. PJ's my brother. Right, wrong, or indifferent. Am I supposed to have his back? Yeah. So what was I supposed to just let him fight? Come on. Like, are you kidding me? So we're not allowed to go out because we have a position? Like, that's ridiculous. I know, Bo, I know. Just be careful. And, you know, he knew my points. Like, what the fuck am I even in the life for? Can't go out, can't have a good time, can't go to clubs. The fuck? I, might as well be dead for that matter. So um, he understood. He let that go. So we're one night, we're all out. And now with the strip club, what I did with the penthouse club, never took a penny from them. Wasn't my style. What I did was I told them, I said, listen, I'll make sure nobody bothers you, you guys. And... You have to be dressed up going in there. Sports coat or dress shirt, tie. Um, you can't have like this, what I'm wearing now. They're not going to let you in. Baseball cap, definitely not letting you in. Sweats, they won't let you in. So I turned around and told them, here's the conditions I want. You see that VIP table in the front? I want that table. When I call, I don't care who's there, clear the table for me. Okay, you got it. Number two, see the baseball cap? If I come in with a bunch of guys, we have baseball caps on, you let us in. I don't want to hear you can't get in. I'm not taking off my hat for anybody. Okay. Number three, I pay all my bills. I'm not, gonna, I'm not asking for any favors, any credit. I pay my bills, but I want the service. Okay, you got it. That's it? You don't want an envelope? I don't want an envelope. I'm Okay. So with that, um, you know, I would go there every, I mean, I, I have stories after stories after stories. Puffy used to stay on the other side of the VIP. So with both the stages here, my table's here, his table will be here with his entourage at times. Um, but this one night I'm out, it's Vinny, Bruno, Ace, Anthony Donato, and there might have been two more friends with us, May guys. So we're a heavy night that night. We're out. Vinny wanted to have dinner. So we're all enjoying a nice dinner. So all of a sudden, Ace hits me. Hey, the club? No, no, we can't. We can't. So Vinny catches the move. So Vinny looks over. I'm like, I give him one of these. And he knew. He already knew. He knew because we all had a few drinks in us. Go ahead, go ahead, call. Go ahead, you want to go? Let's go. He says, I know you haven't been going there often, right? I said, nah, Vin, come on. I don't go there much. So I make the phone call, told him I'll be there with seven, eight guys. I told him clear out my table. I said, all right. As soon as I walk in from the valet, they take my car. Now Vinny's with me. Hi, Dom, hugging me. I get into, walk into the place. They have the cashier girl there. She comes out from behind the cashier. Hi, sweetie. Hug comes, hugs and kisses me. I'm like, all right, come on. The guy at the beginning of the club, he starts walking, comes, greets me. Come on, Dom, I'll walk you there. The place is packed. As we're walking, the girls are walking with their bottles. Hi, Dominic, kissing me. The other one, hi, kissing me. We finally get to the table, and Vinny looks at Bruno. Sure, this motherfucker doesn't come here too often. You're here all the time. We, who are you joking? I said, well, I have a good time. He started laughing. 
He said, for somebody who doesn't come here a lot, everybody knows you really well. But we sat down, had a great, great time. I mean, good evening. The girls there, just unbelievable. And what I would do, I don't care for the lap dances. I'm not one of those guys. It's just not my thing. Um, so what I would do, I'd get the funny money. Usually I'll get two to $5,000 in funny money. I put it on the table. And they bring out two bottles, bottle of champagne, bottle of vodka. And I'll tell the girls when they come around, they're like, can we give you a lap dance? I said, sweetie, I'm not one of these guys for that. If you want, because they have like a 45-minute circuit, they'll go around the whole club, and then they get 20 minutes break. I says, on your break, if you want, come sit down, have a drink with us, hang out. But... You know, if these guys want to lap dance, the money's there. Go ahead, give it, take care of them. But I'm not into that. And let me tell you something. I pulled more girls with that, telling them I don't like that. I don't, you know, I'm not one of these other guys. But just come hang out. Right away when they come, their guard drops. So we're laughing, joking. And it got to the point. At the time, I wasn't with my daughter's mother. I was basically single. That Vinny would come by the house and like his one girl leaving next day another girl he's like what the fuck where are all these girls coming from I'm like ah, I'm just having a good time he says yeah no I bet you are but uh I had a blast in that place that place was phenomenal and their steakhouse upstairs they were rated the number one steakhouse in the city this was when they first opened up they opened up I think in 2002 2003 and just the steaks were phenomenal. Big, big slabs. Uh, they bring uh, just unbelievable. But uh, the place was just, it was wonderful. That was like my candy store. I had more fun there, more laughs there. But even Vinny, when he went there, he's like, I like that girl. Oh, my God, look at her. Come here. Come on, sweetie. Come on over. I mean, we just had the run of the place. And that was the perks with the mafia. That Those were fun times. Those were where the, you get that glitz, glamour, glory. Everybody knows who you are. I even would have people, when I'm walking in with the baseball cap, hey, you own the place. No, I don't own it. Oh, I know you own it, because how do they let you in with that? Ah, don't worry about how. You know, and people think you own the place. I ain't own the place. We knew the owners. We had everything on lock. But to go into a place like that, that's what the mafia stuff was about. That was the fun times where... Mm -hmm. You just pick up a phone and you have car blanche. And I didn't look to shake them down. I could have gotten ten, twenty thousand a month from them. And I didn't. Reason why? It's a le even it's a legitimate business. If they were doing something illegal, then yes, I would have asked for my cut for the protection. But legitimate businesses, uh, I just let go. Even one night, what I would do, every Thursday night we'd get together all the builders. Dear, dear friend of mine, I'm not going to mention his name. If he's watching, he'll know who he is. I'm talking about him. Childhood friend. Walks me in with his construction group, banks, everything. So every Thursday night, they got together. So when we'd hit the city, I'm with this group of investors, bankers, builders, um, engineers, even uh, people from the building department, the... Um, the um, people that approve or disapprove jobs. And uh, they look at me, strip club? Okay, we'll go to Penthouse. So we go there and, you know, I'm bringing all these guys in. And there's some nights, some of my investors, here, here's a check for 750000 Here's a check for half a million. I'm investing. I'm investing in the property. But uh, I be leaving there sometimes with a $30,000 bill. One time I'm looking at my Amex, 30,000 Roberto's. Oh no. I get on the phone, I'm calling Amex. I'm like, oh shit, that's the strip club. That was uh, the penthouse. So, but we had a blast there. And like I said, those were the good times in the life. Those are times that you do miss. Uh, just with all the brotherhood, everybody having a good time, drinking and just uh, enjoying it. So, people, if you like this story, please hit that subscribe button. Um, there'll be more content coming out. We'll be talking about a lot more stuff, especially with PJ.
with all the stuff we were doing, the hits, uh, you know, with the guns, everything. I mean, it's just story after story. So stay tuned. We'll have a lot more content. Thank you, everybody. Hope everybody has a wonderful evening, morning, afternoon. Peace out. Thank you.